Hey guys, we're building a fence to keep the rabbits out. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week we're building a fence. Um, I didn't, f I'm, I'm not gonna film every single aspect of it simply because it's gonna take too long, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I have it in different stage here. I'm gonna take you to the building process so that you see what I had to do to build a fence, all right? So the first thing you're gonna notice is that we chose this style of fence, all right? So essentially um, a more Victorian type, you know, type of fence, which goes with the house and everything else around here. One of the important design point when making a rabbit fence, all right, is that you cannot have any uh, opening in the fence that is more than um, an inch wide, all right, because the rabbits will get through it, all right. So the spacing between each one of the pickets is uh, one inch, all right. The other thing that you have to have is at least 24 inch of height for the rabbits to not get in, all right. And that's what we have here. You know, I didn't, you know, I could have put the fence all the way down to the ground. I didn't want to do that, all right? So we put this board here, uh, which is a two by six. I'll explain in a second. The reason we did that is because the grass will grow in between the pickets and, you know, it's difficult to string trimmer and, 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 and deal with it, all right? But with, with the solid board here, it, it's gonna be easy, you know? So that's why we wanted to have the solid board here, okay? Um, that created a pretty interesting uh, thing, is that this board, the picket, and the two by four that you see behind here, have to all fit within the three and a half inch of the uh, uh, four by four post there. And that required a little bit of calculation. So right, I mean when designing your fence, one of the primary consideration is where are you going to put your posts, all right? Posts are variable. They can't be too, too far apart, you know, that then the member becomes sagging and all of that. Because we were framing this garden, okay, and we had a kind of a um, uh, fixed fence placement, which was in line with my you know, the entry to the garden raised beds there, all right? So that was fixed. Other thing uh, that was fixed was my shower post there where this return was going to end. A uh, fixed post was the fence post uh, that we had to terminate the fence on. So what we decided to do to make the look more balanced is we took this dimension here, okay, between this post and this post, transferred it to this post and this post, all right? So that way the dimension look pleasing, okay? Otherwise, I would have, if I, if let's say I took this section of fence and I split it in two, I would have had, you know, kind of a, asymmetric kind of look to my fence and you know I, I we didn't think that was too too pleasing here so by doing the two section the same width and then dealing with the uh, the two sides your eye is much more attracted to the middle of the fence okay which is perfect you know when I say perfect it's all plumb like over there you see that it goes up a little bit because of the ground but the cross member are still very plumb okay um, but over there, I'm going to have a little bit more cutting to make the, the, the picket fits, fit correctly, right? Same with the back over there, which goes a little bit up as well. But other than that, the two main areas of the fence are identical to some extent, you know, a mirror image of one another, okay? All right, after I dug the four posts, all right, the first piece I needed to put in was the um, two by six at the bottom here. I'll show you a little later how this all fits together, but I put those two by six in first uh, in setting it into the ground, okay, so that I can have a level two by six at the bottom, all right? So that way I can 
uh, ensure that my my fence would be my pickets would be all, all of the same um, dimension, right? Uh, as you can see, the posts are higher than what they're going to be their final height at. All right, this is 36 inch from the bottom. Okay, so this is the, the, the line that I'm going to cut it at. It's not cut yet because it's really difficult to place everything at the same height when you drill um, into the ground like that and place a post. So they're all at different, you know, 24. Those, those two here for the fence are at 24 inch. This one at the end is at 18 and so is the other one. And the reason I'm kind of going at it gingerly with these is that I have a lot of irrigation piping in the ground. So I didn't want to hit any of that, all right? So I was really careful when I dug them. When you lay out your fence, okay, what is critical is that you find one uh, master post and you use it to define the rest. And what I mean by that, is that the ground is not level, nothing's level. So if you use measurements, okay, to lay these out, it will look all crooked, okay? What you have to do is really use a level, okay? So you take one post that's gonna become, like I say, your master post. And from there, you put the lines that you need to um, obey by, if you will, all right? So, what I did is I took this, like I said, as my master post, and then I started measuring it, okay? Uh, and so 36 inch, the center line of this two by four is at 30, and the center line of this one is at 21, okay? And that's what, that was done uh, because of this reveal here, okay? So doesn't matter the design you pick or, or whatever, you're gonna draw your line and then you're gonna follow these lines through using a level, okay? So what I did with this one, okay? And I'm gonna show you on the other one what I did, but I basically uh, put from the center line, I put my uh, fence hanger and then strung out this all the way to the other side, uh, this two by four here, all the way to the other side and took the bottom of it, okay? And from there, I was able to put the other anger. Did the same for this one, all right? And that's how you lay out your fence so that it's level, all right? Otherwise, the measurement, like over there, if the soil is a little bit lower, you know, like an inch, even an inch, you're gonna see that from a distance, all right? So you take one measurement on one post and then you do the rest using a level line. Okay, whether it's a level like that or an actual uh, line that you put a little water level on it, you know what I'm talking about? You can do that the same way, all right? But the important thing to do, measure from your line, the, measure your lines and then take plumb lines or, or level lines from there to build the rest of the member of the fence. My master pose has been lined up. So to transfer these lines to to the other post, I use this four foot level, okay? And so put that on the line, level it, draw your line here, okay? Same with the center line here, and same with the center line here, okay? That's how I jumped, you know, the fence area. Everything else is, 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 is connected. So you're gonna have a level line to kind of draw around the post. I'll show you on this one over there. All right, so, why it's tricky is because this has to sit proud of the picket. The picket has to be plumb, all right? And that means that I have to calculate where this two by four goes uh, based on all of that. So what I did with this board here, it could have been applied over, I suppose. But then I had to have some nailing for the bottom of these uh, stakes, uh, the, these uh, pickets, so that they don't flim they're not flimsy, right? And I didn't want to put a fourth member down here, all right? Because I already have two of them, all right? So what I did here is I took a two by six and I notched, you know, the back here. Um, look at the picture. All right, and by notching it, this means that I can fit this picket behind it, and it's inset by an inch and a half, so I have, I have enough um, uh, nailing from the back here to, to secure the bottom of the picket, all right, to, 
to the front but from the back so that we don't see the screw because that's going to be a screw there okay so this is three quarter of an inch okay so that's what my rabbit here is in the back the picket is three quarter of an inch all right and one and a half inch all right so that's three inch altogether what i'm using here to to secure that fence brackets all right and those fence brackets have a, a series of holes in the middle if you look at it so what i had to do is figure out the line that i'm going to be putting that in okay and three quarter three quarter and three quarter to the center of the two by four all right means that i have to put that line here at two and a quarter inch from the front all right and that's what i did with that so that way i can put the picket and everything uh, will look plumb all right and i'm going to have that nice facing uh, board down here all right so now we've transferred this line all the way to this side okay and i drew my two and a quarter inch line from this direction down all right so i know where to fix my anger all right so this one now is level with the other one all right so the two by four is just uh, sitting in the angle uh, in the uh, uh, anger over there so i put my level on and raise it until I have a level line here and after that I just draw the bottom here so now my my 2x4 is level with the other side all right so you take your square square it out you know for for the level there then I use the two and a quarter of my square and just drew the vertical line all right so from here i know my anger is going to go right there and this is the bottom of the anger so a couple of exterior one and a quarter inch screw put it on and just secure it in all right then this member falls right in place and it's level all right so you do that for all the members okay so especially when you see this this area over there the ground slopes up when it it's the fence all right so any measurement here would be a disaster all right so you need to use this plumb uh, approach to put your members in all right all right, so once the structure is all in place, all we need to do now is do some pickets. All right, let me show you how I did that. All right, so the final length of my pickets are, is uh, 20, uh, 32 and 3 quarter. And the reason that is, is because they need to rest into that little uh, rabbit that I made on top of the 2 by 6 to give me a finish height of 36 inch. So that's what I have left these are 10 inch less okay the little ones all right the way i start with that is essentially create my blank boards a 33 for the big one so i leave it a little bit long This is just standard one by six uh, pressure treated lumber that I get at my lumber yard. You okay? So that's 33. And 23 for the little guys. let's go to the table saw all right so what I do is that I I 
kept my table saw at exactly the same uh, width that I cut these with, all right? So they go right in. So they are basically uh, splitting this uh, one by six down the middle, all right? So let's do that. So you saw me run the second board as well because there's not they're not exactly in the middle and the reason i do that is so that i can keep some of the bad uh, edge of the board um, out of my finished product all right that you know saves a lot on any sanding that i would have to do all right remember when i told you that i never split the board down the middle to be able to have uh, nice size pickets well this is why so this these boards all came from the exact same lot, same pallet. And as you can clearly see, there's space here. There's a much bigger space there. And you know, there's... They're not the same width. All right, in order to cut the top of the pickets, I set a stop right here, which is the final length. Now, what I don't want to do is move this until I'm done with the picket, all right? So that's a little bit challenging when you have two sides. So let me, let me cut this one here so to show you. And then you flip it. And then you get your picket, right? So that's the first one. Let's do this one. Number two, the smaller guys, okay? I don't want to touch this block. So what I did is I created a 10 inch block, which is what the offset between the small one and the big one are. So all I'm doing, I'm putting the 10 inch there and use that same setup with the same block and that way I don't have to touch any of this and they all be the same size. There you go. All right, so in the large section that you saw, the one I have done and the other one, which is identical, I need uh, 16 of the little guys and I'm gonna need nine of the big ones, so. Let's get at it. All right, now that the pickets are done, the last thing you want to do right now is to start nailing them, all right? First thing you want to do, you want to lay them out to make sure that the spacing is right. And if you have to cheat, well, I'll show you because I'm probably going to have to cheat a little bit here. But here's a trick to make this as painless as possible. I use a thin strip of scrap, plywood, whatever, right? And I'm just going to put it just so that it supports the pickets I'm going to put in. All right, so that way, when I take the picket and I start making my pattern, they're going to they're gonna stay in place. They're not going to want to go every which way. All right, so now let's, let's just lay out our pattern.
All right, and from one of the two by six here uh, that I ripped, you know, from the, the strip that was left, I cut a little spacer. So these are one inch wide, all right? I'm just gonna put them in between every picket and that's gonna tell me how far I am, how much I have to cheat and all that, all right? All right, so now that I have all of it laid out, what I want to do is look at both ends and see how this one, well, I know it's crooked a little bit, but there's a larger gap here than there are over there, all right? Now, I calculated all of that at the beginning to make sure that things would line up like that, but let me show you what I do. All right, so I take a flat head screwdriver, right? And, what, and that's why I like those little blocks so much, is that now I'm gonna take the um, first picket here and just push it out a little bit here. And you see how the picket, the little blocks are all moving the pickets together? So now I'm looking at this gap. I'm looking at this gap, which should be like this. And I'm happy with that, they match up. So now let's start screwing it from the back here. Before, what I want to do before I uh, start nailing is I want to put one screw in the middle of each picket in my, in my uh, two by six here. So that way they won't move when I start nailing it from the front. And you see how those little blocks are keeping the gate nice and tight and they're all moving together if they have to move. But this is, you know, it takes a little bit of time to make those, but it's well worth it's well, well worth it later on. Now I'm using nail on the front because that way it won't show as much of a scar, you know, when I start painting it, all right? So now I'm gonna take one block, I'm gonna use it to space the other pickets. All right, second section of the fence is done, all right? I need this little bit over there and, and that little return. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it right now. Weather's moving in and it's moving in for the next couple of days, so I'm gonna pack this up and uh, we'll see you when we see you, all right? Hey guys, so this gnarly little section here, I want to take you through everything that I'm doing to it because it's, it's how you make things line up, all right? So if you look at it right now, looks kind of okay, but look at what's going on here, okay? So you see how the ground is sloping up, okay? That's why I was telling you, uh, I made sure that the main sections were plumb uh, and level because that way I was able to take the, 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 the pickets and just make them work, right? But in this particular clay case, the ground goes up all right and as you can clearly see the pickets going up as well so that's problem number one okay uh, problem number two is also that the light length of this section here did not agree too too well with this width of pickets so i had i had a huge gap i had over two inch of gap over there so I'll show you how to fix both, uh, but right now let's move to the other side so I can show you how we're gonna solve some of those issues. All right, so I have to cut all of these board, all of these pickets, all right? So using this tool here, I was able to pick the um, angle of the bottom there. And as you can see, and maybe you can't super clearly, but all the pickets rest on this side right because it's like that so it's squared so this side is sitting on the on the two by six there all right 
So this is where, you know, to restore that spacing right here, right? This is where you can trust now the level members that you created, all right? I created a block that matches the height of the reveal of the top of the picket here. And I also did one for the big ones, okay? So all I have to do now is go in and take the top of the picket here and just mark it. Now, this is not where I'm gonna cut it, obviously, but you know, it's necessary to do that. All right, so this is where, this is essentially the height that they're too long, all right? Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here. All right. Now, remember when I told you that it's resting, that each of the pickets are resting on the right hand side of the picket? That's gonna become really important when I'm gonna cut, all right? Because what I'm gonna to want to do is take this height and make it this height right here and cut it at that angle, okay, that I have with this. Let's go in the shop and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is take that angle that I got from my fence here and, and put it in my, and, and basically match that angle with my saw here, okay, which is essentially five degrees from what I gather here. Okay, so let's just take a quick cut here. Okay, and there you go, all right. So that's what we were trying to achieve. So five degrees, okay. So now, given that, this is the first of the picket, you know, with my line here. So essentially this picket is too long by this much. And remember I told you that the right hand side is the one that is on the wood. So I want to transfer that dimension to this one here, okay and then cut at five degree, all right? So let's do that. So this is uh, 516. Okay, so 516 right here. And now I want to just cut it with my laser. I want to cut it with the laser right spot on that mark. All right, so let's go fit it. All right, so with my five degree angle, Now this is nice and tight at the bottom, okay? And well, yeah, it's not at the right place. Uh, all right, and now nice and tight at the bottom. And if I take my block here, you see that it's dead set on it, all right? So that is the job of basically getting all the other ones cut the exact same way. Transfer the height here, to this right side and cut them all at five degree. All right, so you saw me number them because the last thing you want to do is mess them up. All right, so I'm checking on both sides to make sure that uh, everything is cool. And what I'm gonna do right now, before I go uh, pin them from uh, the back here, I'm just gonna put a nail so that they don't move, all right? Uh, 
all right so that is it for this uh for the the height right um as i told you before i had a second problem you know where the spacing over there and over here you know was way way off i basically was in the middle of a post and what i ended up doing and i don't know that you can see it but if you do you have a good eye but let me show you um, the last five pickets so from this one on are a little bit thicker okay by about uh, 316 of an inch okay uh, not yeah 316 okay and that allowed me over the five to be able to gap uh, the, the end correctly the only telltale that you can see from where you are look at the angle of the post here and look at that one so you said this one's a little flatter well those five are have all the same flatness okay as opposed to these guys which are a little bit uh, steeper right now the reason i did it this way is that i didn't want two posts that were one that were next one next to the other to actually have that difference because you would see them but the way you put it with, with this layout i'm able to hide that little thickness difference into the last five and make up for my um, for my spacing so that's how you cheat basically <laughs> to make this work all right now let's do the little reveal on the other side so here again i had to cheat all right uh, but differently so if you can spot what i'm doing differently you know let me know but what i did here is that instead of having my post with one inch in between i put the block on the other side so now i have three quarter of an inch and then the two have a nice little reveal on each side i would never do that if two po if two length were on the same pane like i wouldn't have done that on the other side over there because you can clearly see if they're one next to the other but you'll never look at this side and this side with the same angle because they're at 90 degrees to one another so you'll never be able to tell that this is a little bit tighter than the other one so that's how that's how you cheat and with this one i didn't have to mess around with the height of the picket because this board is 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 a level all right so my pickets are all at the same height oh so we're getting near all right here it is in a close-up all right so as you can see a little bit tighter but that's because i'm telling you as soon as you come over here you can hardly distinguish and like i said you know you'll never look at them at the same angle so you can't really tell all right so that's the finished fence and like i said here you know the last five picket is where i cheated you know you can make up make out the top that's a little less angular than the one next to it you know you can tell from the two big ones all right guys so that's it you know you have a nice view of the garden here you know kind of all centered up on the tower there and the willow back there next thing we're going to trim the post and uh, decorate them and build a gate but that's going to be next time all right so guys hope this helped you and if it did give me a like and see you next time all right thank you bye